Hello all, I'm here with a new video for you today with my lovely co-host who is currently getting uh, scratched behind the ears. And today I'm here, hey, hey, no eating, no eating my hand. And today I'm here with a first look at Pop OS. Now this is my second attempt to make this video, so I guess you can kind of call it the second look at Pop OS because I tried to make it yesterday and... Turns out I'm still pretty amateur at this YouTube thing, and I completely screwed it up through OBS. But hopefully, this time, I can get you a nice, good first impression, and uh, like I guess that second impression, and give you a good feel for the OS. So, over to the install. All right, and here we are. About to start, start Pop OS 22.04. So it follows the old Ubuntu LTS. Pretty typical boot up here. I am running this in VirtualBox for those who are wondering. Most of you that will probably be pretty obvious. And here we are finally in the live environment of the live CD. And of course that comes up. Now this is my second time doing this because my first time doing this was a complete disaster. And this came up the first time too. And it didn't actually cause too many problems. See, it gave us the installer here. One of the more interesting things about Pop OS is how it kind of just launches you into the installer right away. So we're going to go English. We're going to go United States. US. We're going to go stick with the default. And we're going to go with a clean install. Virtual hard disk. And the full name is going to be Linux Invictus. In case you're wondering, yes, I really do feel cool when I say that name. You know? It's just a cool sounding name. Maybe I'm like 12. So, or at least at heart I'm like 12. Mm. Put a password in here. Now, this is something that's actually a bit interesting to me, is how Pop OS encrypts everything by default. Really, or at least it pushes you that way by default. Most distros don't really put you there by default, so now the installer is just going. We're starting off by partitioning the drive. It looks like a fairly typical Ubiquity installer, although the way it does things is a little bit interesting, and you'll see what I mean in a minute. For now, we're just going to let this run and let it do its thing. So we're still at about 6% for extracting the files. It's been a few minutes, and we'll let it keep running. Bear in mind, on real hardware, this should go much quicker. These things do tend to be a little bit slower to install in VMs. So... I'll get back to you when it's finished. Alright, so now we're just finishing up the install here. You can see it's still giving us the same screen and the finish install screen. When it says finishing install, it does give us a terminal here that actually shows us what's going on. Most Ubuntu installers will do this. I suspect this is a fairly... I suspect this is some kind of implementation of Ubiquity for the installer. Unfortunately, for some reason, it's grayed out on me here. Scroll up and see what it says. Okay. Hmm. Okay, it makes sense that it's kind of stuck there, so it's just updating the bootloader now. Uh, yeah. So let's just give it a couple more minutes, let it go, and I'll see you once we get to the actual desktop. Now we're just going to reboot into the desktop and see what it gives us. I should warn you guys that the title, like I said before, the title of this video, I guess, will be a little bit misleading. Because even though I've never used Pop OS on real hardware, this is going to be actually my second time installing it on the virtual machine. Because, like I said, I tried to film this video before and, yeah, total amateur. Total amateur hour. Pretty interesting that it asks you for the password to decrypt on boot i kind of like that though because it it does actually make it more secure and 
certain ways. There, now we're finally getting somewhere. That was the login screen. Pretty basic. Now let's get ourselves a look at what this desktop looks like. I know it's an implementation of GNOME. This version doesn't include the uh, new Cosmic desktop they're working on. And that's kind of why I wanted to do a first impressions of this one. Because I wanted to see what it actually looked like before Cosmic. And I have to admit, at least so far, okay, this is interesting. So we get an option here to extend the dock to the edges, which is nice. I'm gonna, I prefer that one. And we get options here to configure the top bar, which is also nice. So yes and yes. Okay, open and switch applications from launcher. Press the super key or use an icon of the dock to display the launcher search field. Use arrow keys to quickly search between open windows or type the name of the application to launch it. Launcher makes navigating the desktop faster and more fluid. I might give that a try out in a minute here. Let's see what the welcome screen gives us next. Gestures for easier navigation. I don't know about you guys, but I never like gestures on touchpads. I always found it felt like you were making gang signs trying to uh, navigate your laptop. Okay, so we're gonna go dark theme. We're not psychopaths. At least I'm not a psychopath, maybe you are. And location services. We're gonna keep that turned off. I'm glad it prompts you with that and leaves it off by default. But I'm also like, I kinda wish it wasn't there. I understand some things need it. So this is what I meant is what is a little weird with this distro is how once you actually run the installer, it actually gets you to do a lot of this stuff on first boot, whereas a lot of uh, distros, like say for example Linux Mint, would get you to a uh, do this while you're installing. Okay, we're gonna skip the Google accounts. All done, we're gonna start using Pop! OS. So the first thing is, let's check out the updater, see what that looks like. I imagine that because this is 22.04, there's gonna be a lot of updates. Okay, man, that doesn't seem to have brought it up. That's the pop shop there. Right here, the icon with the rocket. Huh, okay. Doesn't seem to have actually launched the updater. Alright, I'm going to go into settings first and fix the resolution before anything else. Oh, okay, never mind. It's launching the pop shop and it's launching the updater. It's just launching very slowly. That's probably because I have it in a virtual machine. Um, Let's take a quick look and see how much RAM it's using. What's going on with the system resources here? Not the most scientific. Oh, okay. So this is definitely a little on the uh, chubby side for Linux distros. Considering that I'm just running the updater and a settings menu, and it's already using 2.2 gigabytes of memory and 100% of the CPU. Now, granted, I only gave it one core on my CPU, so, you know, like I said, this isn't a virtual machine. It's obviously going to be running. It's obviously going to run faster on real hardware. But we're going to go updates and installed software in the pop shop. We're going to go update all. It looks like there's a fair amount here to update, if that's if I'm reading that right. The Pop Shop does actually seem to be quite nice though. It's very nice, looks very nice, very polished. Let me see some, oh, Warzone 2100? Okay, that's pretty cool. So I'm gonna check something here because I wanna see if it has Flatpak support for certain applications out of the box. Like OB, oh, yes it does. Nice, nice. So the Pop Shop comes with Flatpak support yeah, flat packs and debs. There we go. Very nice. So I'm going to close that. That shouldn't stop the updates. Doesn't on most distros. I hope it doesn't on this one. And we're going to go display because this display looks like it's returning to the 90s in the worst possible way. Okay, so, okay it's 1280 by 1000. So probably more like turning to the 2000s in the worst possible way. But we're going to go 1080p. There we go. That's much better. Yeah, doesn't that look so much crisper and cleaner? I wonder how much the resource usage is going to drop by. Oh well, it didn't drop by very much when I closed that settings app. But let's see what the pop shop here is doing. It's funny that it comes with Warzone 2100 in the pop shop. I'm pretty sure I remember playing that game when I was like nine at my friend's house. All right, so let's check what the updates are doing here. Okay, so that's a weird little quirk. 
because it kind of looks like a button, but when you click it, try to click it, oh, it jumps away from you, which is kind of annoying. Now, this thing is just lagging. It doesn't seem to really want to show me what the updates are like. I have to admit, when I installed Linux Mint in a virtual machine, I used the same specs. Because I used the same, because here's the specs I used for the virtual machine. I used one core on the CPU. The CPU is a uh, i7 3770. The um, RAM, I used four gigabytes. And for the video card, I set it to uh, 128 megabytes with acceleration. And when I do that with Mint, it does not run nearly this slow or take up nearly that much memory by default. So I do think that Pop! OS is definitely one of the chubbier distributions out there. On the other hand, it does seem to be one of the uh, implementations of GNOME 3 that I find a lot more tolerable. All right. You know what? I'm going to see what happens if I click install a game here. Okay. Because I'm... Yep. I do remember this game. I love old 3D real-time strategy games. It's interesting that it comes with it out of the box. That's pretty cool. I wonder what other games it comes with out of the box. Is there a section and okay, so how do we Okay, categories. There we go. Don't mind me guys, I'm just a little bit slow. Oh so if I the pop shop is supposed to be famous for games. Like isn't so let's see what it gives us here. Oh it is just chewing up the resources of this VM. I wonder if that might be because I'm putting my machine through a whole lot right now trying to record this and run the VM, but I've installed other, like I've said before, I've installed other operating systems on a VM and it has not been this laggy. I wonder if, I bet you, I wonder if it's not showing me, well no, that's weird. Okay, I kind of wonder if it's not showing me the games list because it's installing updates, but on the other hand, if it was doing that, then it shouldn't have showed me, then it shouldn't have given me an option to install Warzone 2100, which it just did. But I do kind of wonder if that's what's going on anyway, even if it doesn't make any sense. Because, uh, if you guys work around computers long enough, you know how these things are. Sometimes, sometimes things really don't just make sense. I suspect it's more because this distro is, as I said, really, really heavy on the resources. Let's take a look at something else here. Oh, and it just locked up completely on me. Yeah, the rest of my desktop seems to work. Isn't that just lovely? So, I'm gonna reboot this and we're gonna try this again. There, I had to get a little forceful with the restart there, but at least it looks like we're back. Let's see what happened with the updates. As we're gonna wanna rerun that and See if we can finish them because they definitely didn't finish. It's not great that it hung on me while doing updates, but I suspect I must be way under the uh, minimum requirements for this this bro. I really sh probably should have looked at that, but I didn't because I've never had a problem with like this before. Not with not okay. What I should say is I've never had a problem with a distro running slowly with the stats that I put on the VM before, so. All right, let's see what we got here. Okay. Okay, so the updater is running slowly. I do, I, I shouldn't be 100% surprised about this because this, like I said, is a very old ISO, so. Generally, you know, old ISOs are gonna take a bit more to, a bit more updating. All right, so let's get a little bit more into the desktop while I let that run and it's not frozen. Because I'm not super familiar with GNOME in these days, because I'm going to be honest, I absolutely hate, hate it GNOME 3, so really these days I'm more of a Cinnamon or a KDE guy. But the one thing I do have to admit is that the desktop for this, at least it looks nice. I'm really not sure how I like the thick bar at the bottom, but I'm going to give it a chance here and see what it does when I open up Firefox. Because I want to see if it stays in the way. Probably asking a lot of this poor uh, VM opening up Firefox. Okay, I... Maybe this is me being completely unfamiliar with uh, GNOME desktops, but I really hate that button setup. Like I said, this is why I've been over in like Mint and KDE land for the longest time. 
All right, we're going to skip through that, skip through that. Okay. The bar does stay persistent when you open up a full screen browser. That kind of sucks. Let me check one other thing here. So we got Office System Utilities. Just to make sure it installed Warzone 2100. Okay. Let's say up to date software. Okay, good, good. We didn't install Warzone 2100. No, it didn't. Okay, so it didn't do that. I wonder if that's what made it hang a minute ago. So, what do we got here? We got Office System Utilities. You know what? We're going to install an application here through PopShot because I kind of want to see how it works installing applications. And I want to see if it's going to add another menu in the Applications menu. If we will, so let's look up VLC. That's something most of you guys are probably going to want to install. And let's see if this is going to give us a media tab or something to that effect. Oh, okay. All right. So it didn't, so it didn't actually finish installing the updates. All right. So here's what we're going to do. There, this should, this should finish everything that was installing when it froze on us. I had to be a little forceful with the, uh, Shut down, but I'm pretty sure it was hung, so I would have stuck in the, been stuck in the same position anyway. All right, so it updated the kernel. All right, so what I'm gonna have to do is run this, let the dpk dash dash configure dash a run. That should clean up the update, which I thought the pop shop would have done that automatically when I hit check for updates again, but instead it just told me that's fully up to date. Honestly, I have to say, I'm actually, I'm really not impressed by that. So, let's just let this run and do its thing. Alright guys, so while I was a, uh, letting that updater run, I decided to take a look and see what's eating all the memory on this thing. And, turns out that its app center takes nearly a gigabyte of memory to run. Why on earth is it taking that much? That's kind of insane. So, you know what? I got Mint running on the desktop here. Let's take a look and let's see what that, what the App Center takes. Or Software Center, sorry. Oh, we got... Alright, so that's loading. If only I can... If only my yeah, system monitor, there we go. I'm gonna go... Memory. So Mint install takes a third. One third of the... Wow. The App Center in a uh, Pop! OS is taking as much memory as OBS is on the host machine. That's insane. I was going to go more into different stuff on this OS, but I have to admit that between it crashing when I was trying to run the updates and how slow it is in the virtual machine and how big... There's another complaint, too. That app bar is huge, and it is persistent. I was planning on going into more stuff on this, but honestly, as it is right now, I am thoroughly unimpressed. Maybe I'm just the guy that's missing the point here. That, okay, I'll give that a bit. That's kind of cool. Although, at least the launcher. The launcher's nice. Everything else on the bottom bar here is pretty bog standard. It does come with its own nice launcher. So, I'll give it that much. That's the one good thing I can say about it. Oh, and Pop Shop comes with Warzone 2100. Which, I'm pretty sure most distros do. Because I'm pretty sure the game's open source now, but still... Pretty cool. But yeah, I have to admit that in conclusion, I am sadly pretty thoroughly unimpressed. And I say sadly because I actually strongly endorse System76 and a lot of the work they're doing. But man, Pop! OS is really, really fat, frankly. Like, this is a really a, a resource-intense Linux distro, and it's laggy. And on top of that, it crashed on me when I was trying to install the updates. And now... Well, okay. It didn't crash again. I'll give it that much. I'm going to do one more thing here, just to be a little bit fair to Pop! OS. Because what I want to do is I'm going to reboot it again and see how much memory it takes without anything else running right after boot on a fresh end. So let's see how much it takes. If I can find the reboot. Yeah, okay. So I found a reboot. I'm not... That, that one's on me, guys. And we're back to a desktop. 
did seem to bo at least boot quicker this time. But maybe the updates helped. It still feels kind of laggy. Let's go system, system monitor, see how much we're running for RAM with this. thing still takes 1.4 gigs on boot. Nothing else running but the system monitor. That is... So the most comparable distro to this one that I would consider is probably Linux Mint. And Linux Mint, that's about three or 400 megabytes more than what Linux at least. Linux Mint typically takes around a gig. This takes around 1.4 gigs. And when I was running Endeavor OS, Endeavor OS with KDE was taking like 500 megabytes. So for a Linux distro, this is huge. So I'm sorry guys, I know a lot of you guys really, really like this distro, but I just can't give this one my approval. It uses too many resources. It crashed for me when I was trying to install updates. And then what was worse than it crashing and when it was installing updates was that Pop OS, or Pop the Pop Shop, sorry, instead of telling me that I needed to run the package to finish the updates, the Pop Shop just said that the updates were done until I tried to go and install something else. And then it said, you need to run uh, DPKG, which, okay, that's fine. The fact that I had to run DPKG, that's not on Pop OS. That's a standard procedure whenever, on any uh, Debian-based distro, whenever your updates fail. Also, the bottom bar here is huge, and there's no maximize window here either. Now, I know that's kind of a preference thing, but that's what I like. Maybe there's an option in there to add it. And I'm sorry, guys, I'm just I'm disappointed in this one because, you know, I really like System76's work. I've heard this is supposed to work great with NVIDIA drivers. So agree with me or disagree with me. You can like, down, like comment, subscribe down below, and don't forget to pray every day. Have yourself a great day.